Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Tasha and thank you so much for joining me. When you examine your breasts and you find something not quite right, the first thing that comes into your mind is, oh no, this must be a cancer. It can't be anything else, right? Well, actually, that is not strictly true. The majority of lumps aren't cancers at all, and there are a number of other possible causes of lumps, which I'm going to be talking about in this video. Number one, cysts. Cysts are an example of commonly found lumps in the breast. They're usually found in women between the ages of 30 to 50, and they are essentially small sacs filled with fluid. Cysts can feel soft and are normally not painful. They can appear overnight, and as a result, it can be such a surprise for women because one day there's nothing to feel and then the following day, suddenly there's a lump in the breast. So how can we tell that a lump is a cyst? Well, after a clinical examination, the best way to tell is by having a breast ultrasound scan. And on the scan, there is a very characteristic picture where the cyst can be seen as a sac with fluid within it that looks dark in color. The majority of the time, nothing needs to be done. Occasionally, cysts can be quite large and because of the tenseness of it, it can be uncomfortable. And if this is the case, we can relieve the discomfort by deflating the cyst by putting a needle and taking the fluid out that way. This is also called an aspiration. The thing is, sometimes cysts can refill very quickly and so we only aspirate them if they are symptomatic. In the distant past, we would normally excise cysts, but now we don't do that anymore because it's not necessary and we just leave them alone. Some women are more prone to having cysts than others and we know that they are hormonally related. Unfortunately, there is nothing we can do to minimize cysts from coming. So if you do find any lumps, don't assume them to be a cyst, you have to get them checked out. Number two, fibroadenomas. This is another commonly found non-cancerous lump in the breast. Fibroadenomas are in fact the commonest cause of lumps found in young women, and they are normally not painful. They develop because the breasts are quite dense in young women. And as we get older, the denseness of the breast become less prominent, and that's why fibroadenomas become less common as we age. Clinically, fibroadenomas have a characteristic feel to them. They are rubbery, reasonably soft, have well-defined edges, and are quite mobile. And the way we can confirm that this is a fibroadenoma is again by using an ultrasound scan. The radiologists are able to tell by looking at the scan if this is a fibroadenoma or if it's something worrying. We would normally do a biopsy if you're over 25 years old or if the lump looks slightly indeterminate on scan. If it is confirmed to be a fibroadenoma, we are happy to safely leave this alone because we know they don't turn into a cancer. But if a fibroadenoma increases in size, especially quite rapidly, then we may consider removing this because we want to make sure it is an aphyloides, which is number three. If a fibroadenoma increases in size, especially if this happens quite rapidly, then we want to confirm it is not a phalloides tumor. The word tumor doesn't mean it is a cancer. Tumor actually is a word derived from the Latin word swelling. So the word tumor doesn't actually mean cancer. Phalloides is called as such because it has a leaf-like appearance underneath the microscope. And phalloides means leaf in Greek. If the biopsy confirms features of a phalloides tumour, then the lump will need to be removed, as they can grow quite big quite rapidly. The specimen is then analysed underneath the microscope. The majority of phalloides tumours are benign. However, there is a small risk of phalloides being malignant, which is a rare form of cancer. Number four, abscess. An abscess is a collection of pus that can be quite painful and is caused by bacterial infection. It may have started as a small superficial skin infection that gradually developed into an abscess. An abscess is usually a lump that is red and can be very painful. And occasionally you may have a fever if the infection has spread into the bloodstream. If there is a collection of pus, then this can be aspirated with a needle and syringe, again under ultrasound guidance. And you'll also get some antibiotics. Repeat aspirations and antibiotic treatment is the best way to treat an abscess, but it can be a slow process. Sometimes abscesses do not respond to antibiotics or aspiration, and if this is the case, then we may have to resort to surgical incision drainage of the abscess. And this is where the pus is let out with a small operation under general anaesthetic. Number five, fat necrosis. Another cause of non-cancerous lump is what we call fat necrosis. Necrosis is derived from the Greek word meaning death. So fat necrosis essentially means dead fat and it usually forms following trauma or surgery. 
So if you have knocked your breast into something um, or if you've been elbowed accidentally by somebody, then the blood supply of the fat cells can get affected and as a result, the fat cells can die. And when this happens, it can create lumps, which can feel a little bit concerning. Although on scans, we can tell that it's in fact fat necrosis. We don't need to do anything for fat necrosis. And a lot of the time the body can heal itself and eventually the fat necrosis resolves, but it may take some time. Number six, papillomas. Papillomas are warty-like growths within the ducts, the ducts within the breast, and these can present as small lumps. They're usually found close to the nipple areola region, which is the darker part of the nipple area. Some people may also experience nipple discharge at the same time, which can either be clear in color or bloody. Papillomas are small lumps that we advise to have removed, and this involves a small operation where the lump is removed, and it's likely that part or the whole of the ductal system underneath the nipple area is also removed. Number seven, lipomas. Lipomas are essentially fatty lumps, and we have fat everywhere in our body. And occasionally, these fat cells create more well-circumscribed lumps that we call lipomas. In fact, you can get lipomas anywhere in your body, not only in your breasts. You can get them on your arms, your legs, your back, your scalp and flanks, amongst other places. Clinically, lipomas feel very soft, and again, they have a characteristic appearance on ultrasound scan. We normally leave lipomas alone unless they become quite large. Number eight, hematomas. A hematoma is a fancy way of describing a large bruise. It's essentially a collection of fluid underneath the skin. You may get a hematoma after you've had a core biopsy, a fall, or anything that may have caused sufficient force to burst a blood vessel. A hematoma may be associated with bruising on the skin, and it's also something that can readily develop if someone is on blood thinning medication. Again, we can see a hematoma on an ultrasound scan. And if the blood is sufficiently fluid, then we can aspirate this again with a needle under ultrasound guidance. Sometimes the fluid is so thick that the needle can't aspirate it. A lot of the time, if it's only a small amount, then we leave hematomas alone because the body can absorb it with time. But if the hematoma is very large, then occasionally we may need to remove the hematoma with a small operation under general anesthetic. Hematomas can also develop after surgery. And again, if it's quite large, then we will need to take the patient back and remove the hematoma surgically. And number nine, galactoseals. Galactoseals are another cause of non-cancerous lumps that normally develop in women who are either pregnant, breastfeeding, or has stopped breastfeeding. They are like cysts in that they are sacs filled with fluid. They are soft, well-rounded, but unlike cysts, galactoseals are filled with milk. Clinically, these lumps may fluctuate in size depending on the state of the breast. In other words, whether it's before or after feeding. Again, an ultrasound scan can confirm the presence of a galactoseal, and occasionally we will put a needle in the lump to aspirate the fluid. If milk comes out, then a galactoseal is confirmed. So how do we treat galactoseals? Well, we normally leave them alone. As long as the woman is breastfeeding, galactoseals will continue to refill and that's why we don't normally aspirate them. They are very common, they don't affect breastfeeding ability, and they don't increase the risk of breast cancer. Now you know that not all breast lumps are cancers, but if you notice any lumps, you must get them checked out by a healthcare professional, and you mustn't try to second guess what a lump may be. The only way to get a proper diagnosis is by getting it seen by a doctor. I hope this has been helpful, do consider subscribing if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the videos coming up and I'll see you in the next one.